Hi everyone, welcome to this week's garden update. This week we ended up going away for a few days down to um, Batemans Bay, which is down along the coast of New South Wales. We try and go there once or twice a year, usually in spring and autumn, but we didn't get a chance to go this autumn. So we went during the, <laughs> the winter school holidays. It was pretty chilly down there, but oh, it's a beautiful area. Um, and it's lovely to see on the drive down all of the trees and um, putting out fresh new growth after the horrific bushfires that we went through this summer. Well, in this update, I'm pretty much just walking around the garden, seeing it for the first time after being away. And I take my camera along with me to share with you. So please enjoy. Over here beside the raised garden bed area, just at the entryway, do you remember I put in this new no dig garden bed and there's something going on in here which I want to show you. So this bed was built up with layers of different materials like compost, manures and straw which you can see here. But look what's happening. Straw, firstly straw is a really great mulch because it breaks down, it's full of nutrients and it feeds the soil. It's actually better than using sugar cane mulch nutrient wise. But the one thing that does happen when you put straw down is that you get this happening. All the seeds, the grain seeds that are in it start to germinate. So it's a little bit annoying. I just pick them out um, and you can see there's quite a bit in amongst the plants. But with these, you can just put them in the compost pile or you can just throw them back on top and the sun will dry them out and it will just add to the layers for this garden. Over beside that bed, I have this large black pot where you can see some nice green growth in there. And these are actually potato plants that I put in here a few weeks ago as well. I actually did it in winter time, just as an experiment to see how they'd go. Um, and they are doing well. They must like this spot because it's full sun. What I need to do now is come in here and put some more layers on top. And I think it's a bit of a microclimate too, because although we have had a bit of frost around, this plant hasn't been affected at all, which is fantastic. I'm now on the other side of this garden area where I want to show you what I did with all of my pots that I had up against the house. So before we went away, I do this every time we go away, I move the pots um, to a more semi-shaded area and group them all together like this. Because it's winter time, I didn't have to worry about watering them too much. Um, so I gave them a big deep water before we left and they've all done pretty well. If this was summertime, what I would probably do is put a basin underneath each of these containers with some water in it just to give them that extra boost and I would ask my friends to help me out too watering them but I didn't think there was any need to do it this time. This here is the primulas. Absolutely love these plants. I've got loads of them starting to flare around the garden. We are so incredibly lucky in this area to be able to grow flowers all year round and it means the bees get to have a supply of food. This hardy annual is one of my top picks for attracting pollinators. But let me show you some more now that are in bloom in the garden. We have lavender, elysium, and some cheery calendula. There is another flower down here that the bees love as well, <laughs> which I'm not particularly delighted that I have at the moment. And it's going on down here with my broccolini plants. Look what is happening. They're starting to bolt. I noticed this when we came back from our few days away that it had started to flower. And you know what I did? I saw my neighbor out the front and I was like, oh, has it been hot here since we've been gone? Because the plant is pretty healthy. It's not under stress. The only thing I can really think of why it's doing this is because, you know, the weather is getting quite warm now and it's this is a cold weather crop and maybe it's just a bit too hot for it during the day. As I had mentioned last week, it is quite warm during the days here. Anyway, the bees like this. <laughs> this is the other plant. Any edibles, if you want to just leave one or two in the ground once they're finished and let them go to flower, the bees will love you for it. I'm up on the back porch here with all of these plants that I'm trying to overwinter. The edibles, remember the capsicums, chilies, and eggplants. 
I'm happy to report that they're all doing pretty well. Um, you know, this doesn't worry me that much. I have a few leaves that are browning, dying off a bit. But as long as the main stem kind of stays green and I still see some nice healthy leaves here and there, these will do absolutely fine. Like actually that plant there that I just showed you, this one here, is already two years old. So I'm going to try and see if I can get another year out of this. I believe this one here, it looks like one of my capsicum plants. One of the great advantages of overwintering plants like this is that it means when the weather does start to warm up again, I will be able to harvest these edibles a lot quicker than I would if I had started to, um, you know, start these again from seed. This is the view that I get to see when I look outside my kitchen window and I'm just loving it at the moment with the oranges, lemons and then down here with the polygala plants. They're starting to flower again with their beautiful purple blooms. I've come down here to take a closer look at these evergreen shrubs. These have just started to bloom now and they will continue to flower right up until the beginning of springtime. I put these in a few years ago as little small tube stocks and they're enormous. They must be over seven foot tall now at this stage. The hot dry summer that we had didn't seem to affect them at all. I was just over there and you can't see many of the flowers at the moment, but give it a few weeks and that will just look like a sea of purple. And can you believe it? I still have that New Guinea bean gourd hanging on this archway. Um, I don't know. I don't really have any excuse as to why I haven't harvested it yet. Um, maybe uh, probably at this stage I might just have to um, use it to collect seeds. I don't know if it would be edible anymore. And over here beside the archway I have this foxtail grass that's starting to die back now. It's green for most of the year but you can see it's starting to get brown but before I cut it back I'm going to harvest all of these. Um, I'm not sure, do you call them flower heads? But they make a lovely um, cut flower for dry flower arrangements so I'll pick all of them off. This is where I put some broccoli plants that have been really struggling in here. You can see that um, they haven't grown much at all. They've been attacked by some kind of insects. And then also up here, you notice that the flower head is starting to bolt. That's where the plant starts to put out flowers. It's probably under a bit of stress and it puts out the flowers um, as, I guess, a survival mechanism. It's how the plant produces seeds to start the cycle all over again. This week we had a guy come out from Sydney Water. So on some properties the main pipes or service tunnels um, run through people's properties and we have one in our garden. We've been here for over 10 years and They've never come to check it or inspect it before, but they did this week. And I'm kind of freaking out just a little bit. Let me explain why. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much at the moment, but my friend has one of these in her garden and they came out and they had to do some work on the pipes. So they go all the way under here, somewhere around our garden. I'm not sure exactly where, but when they came out to her place, they had to dig up all the ground because they needed to fix it. And they said they're gonna be in contact with us. <laughs> I'm kind of freaking out that there's gonna be something wrong and they're gonna to have to come out and dig up the garden. Um, but it is what it is. If it happens, it happens. And hopefully if it does happen, it will be this time of year rather than, can you imagine the middle of summer when everything's like fully grown and in bloom? So I'm hoping if it's going to happen, it will be soon. Well, that's about it for this week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again next Friday.